Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Amanda Lichtenstein, and I am the Alumni Relations Manager at Burnethen College. Thank you to everyone in the room joining us today, and thank you to all the alumni and friends of the college joining us uh, online via our live stream. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Michelle Bedford. Michelle is a rising senior, and she'll be giving a presentation tonight about student athletics at the college. Michelle is doing this because it's part of her um, award. She won an award from the Bernathan College Alumni Association, uh, and Michelle has chosen to connect with the community through two presentations, a presentation this evening and another one this winter on study abroad. So Michelle, thank you for joining us tonight. Come on up here and give your presentation. This is, this is on. <laughs> My mic oh, it is definitely on. I've been looking forward to this presentation for months, so thank you all for being here. And thank you a lot to the Alumni Association for giving me this opportunity to talk with all of you about my personal experience being a student athlete at Bernathan College. Before I start, there's a lot of things I love about Bernathan College. The academics, the social life, or volunteering opportunities. I went abroad, that's another thing. But tonight specifically, I want to talk about a major part of my time at Bernathan College, which was the athletics department or athletics program. So in my speech, I'm hoping to talk about three ways, there's many ways, but three ways in particular about how Bernathan College and the athletics program benefits Bernathan College. So this is through community. That's my biggest piece about Bernathan, the community, in the college itself, Bernath in the community outside of it and beyond. The next part is about jobs, how being a part of being a student athlete has helped me prepare for a job after college. The third piece is very small but important and it could be a huge speech, I'm mentioning it for a brief moment, and that's about physical fitness. And that was an amazing moment for me. And I really thought about how we're putting Bernathan College on the map. And this is an exciting time for me to be a student here. And I'm sorry it's my going into my last year here. I really like this hat. I wish I could wear it for the full speech, but it would block my eyes. So <laughs> I had to take it off. But we are building community here at Bernathan College. We started out from a relatively small town, a small and wonderful town that I love dearly. And it's, it's a very exciting time for me to be a student here because we're reaching out to students from, my, from more diversity. And I've been doing an internship this summer in the garden. And I've learned one thing out of many things, and that's that for any ecosystem to flourish, it needs diversity. There's no one single plant in a garden. There's no one single type of bee in a beehive, but there's many. And that's what we're doing at Bernathan College. We're keeping the foundation the same, where we can move forward in the right direction, but we're diversifying, and, in, and because of that, we're flourishing. And that is exciting for me. So BAC Pride, I had to have that picture. Speaking about diversity, I grew up with my dad, who is a road cyclist, and I've learned that sports have a whole bunch of different cultures. The road cyclist community seems pretty different from the field hockey community to me. And you could say the same thing about motorcyclists or soccer players. So we have a wide arrangement of different athletic programs that we either already offer, will offer this coming year or in the next year. And I'm sorry if I missed any, but I think that's all of them yet so far. And although we're playing for different teams, really I think we're on the same team. We're all playing for Bernathan College, and we're building this BAC pride, this BAC culture, because we're all a part of the same team. I mentioned this a little bit, but I want to get into more depth about it. Athletics and the religious foundation, to me, are a perfect bridge with each other. And there's a few ways I see this. Our coaches are carefully picked to make sure that who they are and what they stand for matches the integrity of the school, the foundation. And they come together, and to me, this makes it an even stronger foundation. Another thing I've noticed is that the morals in our teams 
has to comply with the NEAC, the Northeastern Atlantic Conference, which is who we play with. And in that, you have to play with sportsmanship. And this ties very closely with the foundation of the school, being chari charitable to your neighbor. Another opportunity that we provide our student athletes with is team chaplains. Not every team has a, cha has a team chaplain, but this is a wonderful way to connect spirituality or re religiosity. I always struggle with religiosity, but I brought it into this speech. <laughs> On to the sports field, not just into church service. And another thing I've noticed is through volunteering, but I talk more specifically about volunteering later. One of my favorite moments for this is through the blessing, blessing service. And we held this last year at the cathedral. And this was a very special moment for me. Each team was able to go up and be blessed by the minister, while at the same time having the community thank the student athlete for everything the student athlete has brought to the community. But it wasn't just that, because that would be nice, but what made it really special for me was that it was a reciprocal conversation. The student athletes were then also able to think about everything that the community has done for each of us, and then from there, thank the community. Partially why I'm very excited to give my speech tonight. Speaking of diversity, in this ecosystem, this community that we're living in. This picture really speaks of that for me. In that picture, I'm hugging one of my very, I have many good friends at the college, but this picture in particular shows two of them. And each of these friends, one is 11 and one is four, the one I'm hugging. And four is a friend that came from ANC, like me, and also grew up in this community. So we had a similar, similar background and we brought that onto, lacro onto the lacrosse field together. Eleven was my roommate my freshman year, and I talked more about her in a bit. She was also my co-captain, which I was very lucky to have for the past few years. But she came from Abington High School, so that's different from ANC. But what made the team so special was having people from all over come together and play for Bernathan College. So another way we have community within the school, but even more intimately, just our teams, is through putting up our blog. So this, this summer, my lacrosse team put up a blog for each incoming freshman to get to know each of us on the team already, and for us to know the incoming freshmen. So we write about what our summer's been like, and the incoming freshmen can come into the school already feeling like they have a support system that knows them, and they feel included and happy. That's really special. I don't think every institution does that. They should. I didn't have that. I wish I had that. But it, it not only helps the incoming freshmen coming in, but it also is really good for keeping the team and the coaches connected over the summer. And that's just about building family. Fans. Building BAC culture. Building BAC pride. I love going to other teams' sports games and cheering. I love it. Anyone that knows me knows this. And I go all out. This is our purple game for Sherry, and the whole women's lacrosse team got all decked out and supported the basketball doubleheader. And I think that this fan thing doesn't just work for Bernathan College itself, but it also is stemming into the community. So I love having community members come up to me and tell me that they saw my game or they saw some team win or they saw such a close almost win, but it was such a great fight. I love that. And I was going to talk about this tonight, and I didn't realize we were going to have a special guest, and I already had it planned in my, <clears throat> sorry. Oh no, I really got a frog. <laughs> and I wasn't, oh my goodness, this is a very persistent frog. <laughs> you know, this never happens. But I was going to mention Ron Nelson, and I'm very delighted that you're here tonight because I was going to talk about the community and how the men's lacrosse team last year honored Ron Nelson, and that was a very special event. Another thing we've done is honoring Bob Ives at an ice hockey game by ha hanging a banner for him. And then we've done many things, but another one I was thinking of was the Sherry games. 
where each team has a purple game. And that's a special way that the community and the college can have a conversation with each other. So that closes my piece about community building within the college, within the teams, and within Bernathan or Extended itself. And I get into the part about jobs. I found that playing on the athletic field has helped me feel more secure with a job in my future. And I'll get to that a little bit more speci specifically in a bit. But the first part I was thinking about was being a D3 student. When you're, when you're a D3 student, you have to have a very holistic approach to your student athlete experience. Coach Denise always tells us that academics come first. And that stood really true for me. Academics do come first. I'm at college for my academics. But this sports experience is also a large part of it for me. And having academics come first has taught me to be very organized, have discipline, and balance in my life that's been very crucial that I think will also be so helpful for after college. Now I have to brag about my team because I love my lacrosse team. And for the first two years that we've been in the NEAC, we've also made the honors list on the NEAC. And what my coach said about us was, my assistant and I try to impress upon our team that discipline and focus can be applied in the classroom and in life. It works. We are very proud of them. Yes, it definitely works. Two years on this academic list, it works. And the last piece about that is accountability. In order to be able to play on the field, you have to be accountable for doing your homework and also being on the field. And I think that's an important thing to keep balance in your life and be able to participate in your team or to the commitments you have in your life. Another thing about being a D3 student and this holistic approach to being a student athlete is through volunteering. And I love the picture with my team wearing green shirts because that's when we volunteered at Vill Villanova for the Special Olympics. And so that's a more extended community outreach. But the one on the right is us supporting an ice hockey game while also helping fundraise for my lacrosse team. So that's the personal BAC culture, BAC pride. Oh. Before I switch my slide, I almost forgot. This ties so perfectly with my thing about the religious foundation of the school and the morals. Volunteering, although most teams are required to do some volunteering, I think that this requirement is not a bad thing. I think it's a wonderful thing. And my lacrosse team has had many different volunteering initiatives that I could go on and on and on about, but so have all the other teams. And I think that's a really special thing to let the community know about, about the heart and the nature of each of our student athletes. I also love the non-student athletes, but specific to athletes tonight. Jobs. Leadership. Jobs, leadership, and teamwork. They all work perfectly in a triangle to me. And being, yes? Oh, yeah, no problem. The question was about D3. Uh, division three. There's three different divisions for collegiate level of play. There's division one, which is professional level. And that's where the sport is pretty much your entire life. You're hoping to maybe become professional at the sport. And in that one, you can get scholarships. In D, scholarships for playing the sport. In D2, um, that one's sort of in between, I don't know more about it, but at the end, you could ask it again and Matt Kennedy could save me. Um, and then D3 is what we are, more holistic. Um, you can have a job, you can do your sport, you can be a student athlete. Yeah, but we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end if you'd like. Um, jobs. Yes, I was talking about leadership. So Coach Denise has helped me so much with leadership because right going into my leadership position on the team, she had me read through chapter by chapter with her about how to be a good leader. 
So this talks a lot about Coach Denise's character as a leader and how she taught me how to lead by example for my team. And another thing I thought about when I was reflecting on this is it's important to know when to step down a little bit and let someone else be a leader. Maybe a quiet person on the team suddenly shine. And I think that's true for any type of job circumstance. Just to brag a little bit about Coach Denise, who is also watching live, so I hope I'm not embarrassing her. But she has an amazing network, and people know the type of student athletes that she produces. And they regularly ask her if there's any student athlete that would be able to work for them. And that's the type of network I want to be a part of. That's a sweet deal. My last point about this before I get to one of my favorite things is adaptability. I've had to play numerous positions on, on the lacrosse field, just being able to pick up a new position for each of my teammates. And that's something that I think is true for a job. You might not always be playing the same position or the same role, but being able to learn a new technique from your boss or your coach or your teammate is a really important lesson in life I hope to continually learn but it started on the field. Now my favorite part about jobs is this. This might not look like it connects with jobs, but it does. And it's my fa one of my very favorite pictures. I know I say this a lot, but my team started from ground zero. Three years ago, my freshman year, we started the team. And you had players that had played lacrosse for a long time. You had players that maybe played a little bit, maybe played in high school, maybe they held a stick. And then you had players that have never played lacrosse in their lives, didn't know the sport, never picked up a stick. Wow. And we're playing at a collegiate level against teams in New York, specifically, that have played lacrosse all their lives. So let's talk about handling success and failure. <laughs> and success and failure is constant in life. Definitely constant on the field, definitely constant in a job. So learning how to handle success and failure has been crucial for me for stepping off the field after I graduate and into a job. And the last piece about that is motivation. You have to be able to self-motivate yourself and know when to motivate your team and know when to receive motivation from your team. Not just on the field, not just on the ice or the court, but also in your work, wherever your work is. The last bit, which could be a very long speech for somebody else, but is a short blurb for me, is physical fitness. It is so fun to sit at a game and watch people getting exercise while cheering them on because you really want your team to win. It's the BAC pride. But really, you're also cheering them on for starting healthy habits at such a young age. And that's a really special treat. I love going for a run and de-stressing. And I know many people have ways of using physical fitness to de-stress. And I also think that physical fitness can help you with your confidence. But I don't have any scientific studies on that cited. I just think it's true. And if you looked it up, you would find it. I'll bet you. So in closing. What makes BAC different for me? I talked about the community. I've talked about jobs. And I've talked about uh, physical fitness. But really what makes BAC different for me is this diversity. We're small, we have the vision, and we're diversifying and flourishing. And this is such an exciting time to be a part of this institution. And I think that Part of what makes it so special is the very, very committed coaches, teachers, faculty and staff, teammates, friends, community, alumni, that all put in their hearts day in, day out for this institution to flourish, that are all willing to always help students or alumni. I think that's a pretty special network to be a part of, and it's a rarity to find. And something I'm realizing I forgot to mention, which I had been looking forward to mentioning, but it fits well right now, too, is this community. In this community, 
Matt Kennedy, our athletic director, has brought his family here, and they're an active participant in the community. And that is special, to have administration from the college that didn't grow up here become full-blown a part of the community, and many people have done that. I'm just singling him out. And another example I was excited to give was Coach Denise. He's a famous person in my speech tonight. But her family has been a part of my team family. She brought her husband in, and he cuts oranges for us at halftime so that we can be replenished and run another half. And I'm a midi, so I actually think I'm probably going to die if I don't get any sugar in me. And I also get hangry, so I would not be able to run a second half. I mean, you can actually see my legs slowing down. And then I eat an orange, and suddenly it's like, awesome. <laughs> and Jordan, their daughter, who feels like a teen little sister, and I've loved having lacrosse passes with her before games or before practices, and she's probably our best fan. Not even probably, she is. And she cheers us on at all our games or video chats in to say good luck. And that's a rarity to find. That type of community gives me goosebumps. So things I'm going to remember, because this is my senior year, so when I leave after graduating, what things am I going to remember? This is one of them. Moment shared on the field with my roommate from freshman year and my, one of my very good friends and co-captain, handling success and failure together over the past three years. And I have one more picture of her because I was thinking about athletics, and she's the reason why I played lacrosse. I didn't come here thinking I was going to play lacrosse. It was in the back of my mind. But she convinced me. I said, I think I'm playing lacrosse. And she'd be like, no, she's playing. So yeah, I, I ended up playing. She's pretty persuasive. <laughs> but that was a very special thing for me, to have that diversity right off the bat. Me from a &T, her from Abington, and I got to learn about her culture, and she got to learn about mine. And another thing I'll remember is the academics, being physically pushed in my classroom. And when I got into my specific major, human society, the classes got smaller and smaller, which was a wonderful thing. And I got to be immersed in the classroom with other fellow student athletes, because about 48% of this college is student athletes. So in my classroom, I have a high amount of student athletes in my class. I think we're mainly student athletes. And I got to have this community feeling, asking them about how their game went, or they asked me about mine. And that was a really special thing to be a part of. Or I guess I'm still a part of it, so I can look forward to that. And the last thing I want to talk about is spiritual growth. Because we're a religious institution, and this is from the bottom. This whole ecosystem of diversity that I'm talking about, the foundation of it is at the bottom. And I have been stretched spiritually over my years being here. Personally, so I'm not going to get into specifics, but on the basic level, volunteering has been a very important part for me. And so having student athletes required to volunteer is a beautiful way to connect being useful and charitable to your neighbor right into this institution. There's been many ways that I've been stretched by the spiritual rigor of the of the school, and I'm very grateful about that. So, in closing, I'm proud of being soon, soon to be a BAC alumni. I'm going to continue wearing this hat, maybe at the Grand Canyon, maybe at the Grand Teton, and having people know or ask and be like, that's probably a really cool lion. What school is that? They're like, Bradathan College. You should definitely know about it. So I hope you do the same, and thank you for listening to my presentation, and I'd love to hear any questions. Thank you. Uh, oh, thanks, guys. Um, so we're going to take some questions from in the room, and then we'll take some questions online as well. So are there any questions from the audience members who are physically here. Yeah.
You said you volunteered in the Special Olympics at Villanova. Could you say a little bit about what you did? Okay, the question was about Special Olympics. Oh, actually, this is wonderful because the question is on a mic, so I don't have to reply the question. That's great. Um, well, I wish we had been able to do more, but what we did is we were fans for the um, teams that were going to get gold or silver, and so we circled around the field and we were cheering, and at first I thought we were gonna split into cheering for whichever team, but we ended up just cheering all the time. <laughs> so it was like anything happened, yeah! <laughs> and then when these teams finished, and they were so excited, so special to witness, like this was their highlight of the day by far, and all their friends and family were there supporting them. And we got to go into the room afterwards where they were receiving the awards, and we just clapped and cheered them on as they were getting their awards. And there were people that did more things for that, but that was what we did. And um, I'm extending the question, because there was one thing I wanted to talk about in my speech, but I didn't want to drag on for too long. And something that we did that I think is special is we did Knock Knock Give a Sock, which is a donation of getting socks from anyone in the school or the community and giving them to a homeless shelter. And under my awareness, I think that socks are one of the most forgotten items for homeless people. And believe it or not, I mean, right now my feet are warm, but when your feet are cold, it really cuts down your circulation a lot. So being out in the streets and getting a pair of socks is a very important thing. I actually have a question. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about your um, roommate and um, other members of your lacrosse, lacrosse team that always were interested in playing lacrosse at a collegiate level um, and maybe how the athletic program being available at Burnett then attracted them to the school? Yeah, um, my team is an interesting dynamic. A lot of them um, were drag-ons onto the team that eventually lacrosse became their favorite sport. Um, there are a special few that really did want to play lacrosse, Emma being one of them. And this year we have a whole bunch of recruits coming in, so that's going to change the dynamic of the team, which I'm excited about. I'm really interested to see where the program goes. And this year we had another girl that transferred in um, who had been playing at a different college and didn't like that as much and then wanted to come here. I feel as if I'm not probably, I'm probably not answering your question as well as I could be, but the way that my lacrosse team is, is I think it's a little bit different from some of the other teams. Like a team like the ice hockey team is um, more of a culture where it's been established for long enough that people know about it and want to come. But for me, my freshman year, it was like no one knew that we played lacrosse because we didn't. So we had to bring in whoever we could, and now it's exciting to, last year I was giving tours regularly to incoming freshmen that are gonna become a part of my team now. So I could answer that question a lot better in a few months, or in a year, <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, that was great. I was back in the culture when uh, I went to all the boys' games. I've been to all my brothers' games, and no one ever had watched me. Um, anyway, I was sort of curious how the college men uh, supported you. How did you feel, uh, you know, how did that change your college experience, kind of? That's a good question. I like that one a lot. Um, I think that it depends on the team a lot of the time with how they're motivated, but I think the college is seen as the college as a whole. So teams will come and support, and specifically if you have friends with other people, they're going to be very interested. And I think that when you have a sport that's the same sport as, um, like if you have men and women's soccer, I think that this year they'll support each other a lot. And I think that that was the same thing with men's lacrosse and women's lacrosse. In my human society major, I had a few men's lacrosse players in my classroom, and they were always excited to hear about how our games went, or that type of conversation was really nice for me to feel supported. Because it's true that oftentimes you'll see a bigger crowd at a men's game than a women's game. 
but I think that's changing slowly, and that's something I'm looking forward to. Are you starting to get um, athletes you compete against asking about the college, and do you get involved at all in the recruiting process? I am involved with the recruiting process because I'm a student ambassador for the school, so I've given numerous tours to student athletes that have ended up coming here. Um, as for your first question, which I remember thinking in my head, that's a good one. I can't remember right now. What was it again? Right, right. Um, yeah, that's a good question. So I made good friends at Penn State Abington on their women's lacrosse team, and I wanted to drag them over this way, except for we shared the same number, number 16, and I think that was both our favorite. <laughs> I mean, she was pretty, she's the best opponent friend I've ever made in my life. <laughs> so seeing as how fond I am of 16, maybe she wouldn't give it up. But I think that um, she talked about it. And um, I think that by the time that she was talking about it, she was midway through her college career. And that type of transition midway through isn't always easy, and she's stuck with her team. But I always enjoy playing her. And the weirdest thing is we play the same exact position. And so we got on the circle, getting ready for the draw, and I made conversation, and she made conversation. And I was like, oh, we're the same number. And then this year, we changed which, posi which position we're playing on the field. And I asked her before the game, I was like, oh, I, I don't start on the circle anymore. What about you? I was like, I start on defense. And she's like, I start on defense too. I was like, ah, or maybe I start on the attack. I forget which it was. I, but yeah, it was so weird. Yeah. <laughs> What was your most challenging moment as captain? Oh, that's a good one. Um, my sophomore year, I started out being a captain. So I'm a youngin, trying to lead a team with people that are much older than me. And I also didn't play lacrosse that much in high school. I started out my freshman year. I got a fracture in my foot, so I was put in a boot, and they were like, oh, you can play goalie. Well, before I got the boot, they were like, oh, you can play goalie, which I actually enjoyed, but it was different from field hockey goalie, which was my, my specialty. And um, then sophomore year, I got walking pneumonia, so I was like, oh, that's it. Lacrosse, I'm done for. Maybe it's giving me injuries. I'll just do yoga. So then junior and senior year, and I hardly really played. I played in one varsity game my freshman year, and then I got a boot on my foot. So I didn't play lacrosse in high school. I played in elementary school, I think third, seventh grade. And then college, being a captain of the team and trying to uh, be able to lead while I'm very much learning the sport myself and leading people that are older than me and know more about the sport was a challenge, but a really good challenge to have. If there are no other questions, I think this concludes our evening. Thank you so much, Michelle, for your presentation. Uh, and thank you for everyone uh, joining us in the room and also online. Thank you.